Unto Jesus, with some praise this morning so I will be seated in his presence thank you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus this morning I just want to thank God for how far he has brought us I know that this past five days has been an amazing time in his presence and I want to believe that something has been deposited in your spirit. And I want to trust that after this morning you are going out there and take the word for him. Because there is abundance of grace made available for every assignment given to you. And so I know that programs such as this is not just for us to gather, but to empower us and to send us out there to go and take the word for Christ. And so be purposed in your spirit that after today, you're going to do something extraordinary. Because this grace given in this conference must not be given in vain. Something got to be done with it. And I'm trusting God for you. Amen. And so this morning again, I give God praise for your senior pastor, the general overseer and his beloved wife. Bishop Fitzgerald Odonko and Mama Telma, God bless you. We want to clap your hands for them for the great leadership, the amazing work doing, reaching out to nations and people and villages and going places, raising leaders, empowering individuals and sending them out. This is the work of the kingdom. And Papa and your beloved wife, I want to salute you this morning again for the opportunity and the honor done me to be part of this great conference and to, and, to, and to share fellowship with this wonderful, wonderful people. I don't take it for granted. And I want you to know that from the very depth of my heart, I am so grateful. The fact that somebody is a giant doesn't mean that he's strong. The fact that he's big doesn't mean that they carry strength. Sometimes they make too much noise, but they carry nothing in their spirit. Don't be intimidated by the loudness of their mouth. Don't be intimidated by the cars they ride. Don't be intimidated by the things they talk about. 
all you need to do is to believe in yourself. If God said you can do it, it doesn't matter what your opponent brings. It doesn't matter what the enemy brings. Believe in the word of the Lord concerning your life and step into it. Listen, the devil is not going to give it to you free even though God said it. He's going to come and roar like a lion. Bible says he roars like a lion, but he's not a lion. Jesus Christ is our lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So if the devil say, hey, somebody look at the face of the devil and say, hey, hey, if the devil say you cannot do it, tell him I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If the devil tells you you are nothing, tell him that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. If the devil tells you that I am coming to you and I will fight you with all my cohort, look at the face of the devil and tell him eyeball to eyeball that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge my fortress and my God in him I will trust I shall not be afraid of the terror by night not the arrow that fly by day not the pestilence that worketh in darkness not the destruction at noonday for a thousand shall fall at the side and ten thousand at the right hand side but for you 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 I am speaking to somebody who is going somewhere for you for you it shall not come close only with your eyes you shall see and behold the reward of the wicked for if God be for you who can be against you somebody give him some praise this morning I said give him some praise in his house So, the elders came and said, take us back. Take us back to Egypt. We can't take this land. Even though God has spoken. And do you know why they said it? They said that five things. They had some mindset. They had some mindset. Five mindset. Number one, they had the slavery mentality. They had the slavery mentality. The whole nation of Israel had a slavery mentality. Don't forget, they were bound to the control and the opinions of the people of Egypt. Israel became a nation in the land of Egypt. And, and everything they knew was from Egypt. The only nation they had encountered. So for them, slavery was normal. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me, church? For the people of Israel, slavery was okay because that is, that's who they are. That's how they grew up. And so for many people, like I said last night, the things we do is normal. Some of them were born into slavery and some died in slavery. And so for them, slavery is normal. And for some of us, the things we do is normal because that's what we have known. Gossip is normal. Sleeping around is normal. Poverty is normal. Lying and cheating is normal. Um, stealing is normal. Talking anyhow is normal. <laughs> feeling bad and feeling good about everybody and championing yourself over everybody is normal because that is everything you have known. And sometimes when you are dealing with people like this, you need to get into their minds. So they have the slavery mentality. So as soon as they saw the giant, something reminded them that this is the very place you are coming from. These are the people that controlled you. You can't handle this. And so it was not the giant actually that detected to them. It was their past. It was their upbringing. It was where they are coming from. Somebody pay attention to me because to, this morning you have to get rid of some upbringing. All of us carry some scripts written within us subconsciously from our, from our upbringing and we live by it day by day. So they had the slavery mentality. Number two, they had scarcity mentality. In Egypt, they never had enough. They had lived in scarcity for a long time until even when there was abundance, they didn't believe it. They had the never enough mentality. So even when God gave them manna and said, take just what you need for the day, they took for the next day. 
Because where they're coming from, they struggle to find food. Have you been there before? <laughs> when, when you see other people eating good food and you don't get access to it the day you have the opportunity. You eat until something happens to you. And then you take some home, take away, take away. Hamiyeko, Hamiyeko, give me some, give me some. And say, why? Oh, I, I need some for tomorrow and some for the next day because you live in scarcity. So when there is abundance, you want to secure your future. And so sometimes when you see people you now rushing and, and fighting for food, don't blame them all. It's where they are coming from. Am I talking to somebody here? Because they have never been exposed to constant supply. When, they, when you have not been exposed to constant supply and you come to a place of food in abundance, you want to grab it all. May God become your constant supply. My God, some, some of us, we have never had enough to eat, never had enough to wear. The other day, I opened my closet and I said, God, is this what you can do? Because gone were the days when it rains and I'm wearing a shoe, I still have to calculate my steps. Because even though I wear a shoe, there were holes under my shoe and my socks would get wet. And sometimes it was so, so, so miserable and painful. I remember one day I was in church, man of God, and the pastor came and said, young man, after I left prison worship, he said, come, I see the anointing of God upon your life. God will use you and take you to places. He called me to the front and said, kneel down, let me pray for you. The first thing that came to my mind was the holes under my shoe. And you know, church sisters, they see everything, they talk everything. So the man said, kneel down, I started squatting. Because by the time you are kneeling down, they see under. It's, I said, kneel down, I said, I will squat. I said, it's either you take your anointing or I squat. But for kneeling, it is not going to be. Because there was not enough. Until one day, somebody gave me a brown shoe. And for one year, I was looking for a combination for the shoe. So I kept the shoe in my closet. For one good year, I was looking for a combination. And then one day, I entered into this church, and this man of God preached a powerful and then, and then he came and said, uh, I need people to sow seed. And everybody was sowing seed. And I was a student. I didn't have anything. And then Holy Spirit said to me, you have something. I said, I have nothing. He said, you have something. I said, I have nothing. He said, you have a branch. I said, I don't get anything. I don't have anything. Satan, get thee away. I've kept that shoe for one year. I'm looking for combination. Now, if a man can keep a shoe for, combina for one year, looking for combination, that tells that his situation is really critical. Eventually, I took the shoe and then I dropped it on the altar. The next day, I brought it and I said, God, let this be a covenant between you and I. Henceforth, I will not lack shoes anymore. That is how I settled the shoe matter. May God give you an insight. And may you have constant supply. May scarcity be over. May slavery mindset be over. You are not a slave. You are born of the spirit. And therefore, you can become it. Shout, yes. Number three, they have simple mindset. Simple mindset means that they were, in Egypt, they were limited to manual labor. While they were in Egypt, they never had to solve complicated issues. In the morning, their masters would call them, oh yeah, come, let's go and carry cement. Come, let's go and carry, carry uh, blocks. So, there was no intellectual work. There was nothing like architectural work where they had to sit down and think. And so, they never handled complex matters. They were very simple-minded. And when you study their whole journey, anytime they came across complex issues, they panicked. Why? Because of where they are coming from. I want, I'm just giving you a little background. Just stay with me. So anytime they face the rest, they panic. No food, they panic. Because they had never taken time to think to become problem solvers. And there are some Christians like that. We are always at the receiving end. We are always doing the manual, the manual and, the, and the menial jobs. We refuse to think. We refuse to place ourselves in positions where our innovation will be challenged. Where creativity will come out of us. We are always stretching forth our hand to receive. May God expose you to complex problems so that you can, you can provide complex solutions. I'm not talking to somebody here. Listen, in this world you'll be remembered for two things. Either the problems you create or the problems you solve. 
may you be a problem solver we, you didn't hear me you didn't hear me sometimes when you see people sitting on, the, on top they didn't just get there they solved problems they started solving problems while they were young. When you see them becoming president and MPs, don't just think that they, they, they had dealt with issues. Issues that we don't know about. They have a track record. From now, may you become a problem solver. And may people see you as a problem solver. When people have problems, may your name be mentioned. May you not be too simple-minded. May your brain be complex. And may you handle major issues. If you believe it, shout yes. And then number four, they, they were simple-minded. When they entered Egypt, there were about 70 people. And they lived in Goshen. By the time they were leaving Egypt, when Moses came for them, they were about between 2.5 million to 3, 3 million. And they were still living in Goshen. So they lived in a small place. Very small-minded people. So everything about these people was very small. Now, if you live in a place and you multiply for 70 to 3 million, then something must change. The other day, one minister was interviewed and asked, why do we have too much traffic in town? He said, we didn't think that there would be too much cars in town. Simple, small-mindedness. I don't want to go there. Does that make sense? May, may God give you big mind. You will, you will look at this beautiful edifice and say, what can I add to this? It looks beautiful, but I can add something and make it more. You look at your church and say, what can I do to add? You are constantly thinking, diving deep into the brain that God gave to you and trying to find solutions. There are people who just talk. Don't just be a talker. Be a solution provider. Why do you think they don't call you for meetings? May God activate your brain this morning in the name of Yeshua. Ah, some of us after this program, we are going to think big. You will leave here and begin to think big and you begin to come out with some business ideas. Ideas, ideas, ideas. How many of us are on Facebook? Anytime you click Facebook, you make Mark Zagerman richer. Anytime you click on Facebook, you make music. This guy just sat down and just one idea. He provided a solution to what many of us are looking for. And yes, what some of us use Facebook for, man of God, is that we take pictures and we post. <laughs> Look at my, my Gucci, Gucci bag. I am in church. This is how I looked when I went to church. Really? Stop the Facebook and face the proper book of your life. And do something with your life or as a man think it, so is he. So you can look at somebody and you know how they think. Look at somebody's face. Just look at the person, look at the person. What do you think about the person? I didn't say it though. And so the five man they had was a selfish mindset. When you go through all of this, you become selfish in life. All of this happened as a result of everything they had been through. Slavery mentality, scarcity mentality, simple-mindedness, small-mindedness. It makes you selfish. It makes you feel like the world is never enough. You don't think about anybody. You become self-centered. Self-centered. People who have great mindset don't think about themselves. They think about others. They think about their community. I always say, if all you can do is to feed your wife and your children, you are not doing enough. You must feed your wife and feed your children. That's your responsibility. Your community is your assignment. You did not hear me. Listen, listen. Don't ever doubt yourself. Step out of here and go and do some things. There are some of you sitting down here, people might look down upon you, but this is the game changer for you. After tonight, something is going to change. Something is going to ignite in your spirit. They saw you low. They will see you high. 
they saw you small, they will see you big. For when the Lord shall turn away the captivity of Zion, it shall believe like a dream. Believe in yourself because I see you are about to be lifted. For he raises the poor from the dust and the needy from the dunghill and set him among princes. Listen, this is not the end of you. This is just the beginning of your life. Clap your hands for Jesus. And so Bible said, even when God gave them manna, they were, just, they were just okay with it. Some of us, some of us, we are only enjoying manna and we have taken that to be our promised land. Manna is not your promised land. So don't settle there. And man of God, God has blessed me. I have three businesses. It's your manna. Man of God, God has blessed me. Can you see my car? It's a manna. We have become too excited and okay because we've been hungry for too long. You never bought a car. You joined Tro Tro all your life. Trotsky. And so once you got one car, you are the champion of the village. You are only enjoying what? Mana. Turn to the north. There was something bigger ahead. There's something greater ahead. God is telling you there's a new horizon. Look far. God called Abraham out of the tent and said, See, if you can see it, you can become it. Get out of your tent. Change your tent mentality and have the sky mentality. Harvest, God is calling us to a higher level. After we have done all of this, may something be ignited in our spirit so that we will know that this is not just enough. This is our manner. Our promised land is waiting for us so that the day we shall be laid in state, our children will come and celebrate God for us because we left them with major inheritances. You will not die without accomplishing anything on earth. Am I, am I blessing somebody this morning? So for the people of Israel, after they have circled around, God called them and said, turn to the north. The pro their problem was not the lack of promise, but their inability to think. That was their problem. The promise was there. God has said it. And he's not a man to lie. He would do it because he said so. And so God has done his part. There's a divine part and there's a human part. And so we need to think big and align our thinking to what God is saying. The promise has been given, but their inability to think and to reason through challenges. Anytime you face small troubles, you throw tantrums. Man of God, I'm dead. Who told you you are dead? Anytime something little happens to you, you behave as if you are the only person going through life. Do you know what people are going through and they are still praising God? Sometimes we look at big gates and we say, hey, God has blessed him. Go and sit in his shoes. And sit on his chair and wear his shoes and you, you realize that you don't want to. Because he's dealing with complex issues. Listen, life is not going to be fair. Your, your creativity will be attacked. Your innovation will be attacked. Your anointing will be questioned. Things will hit you until you will ask yourself, am I doing the right thing? If the devil don't come after you, you are doing nothing. And so what you are going through is a sign that you have the power to become. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 10. And he said, and after you have suffered a little while, I will settle you and I will establish you. Meaning that there is a necessary suffering. There was a necessary suffering. There was a necessary attack. There's a necessary accusation. It makes you better. It makes you bigger. Anything that comes against you, you pray against it. You are killing everything, praying against Some of the things, they are heavily permitted. You can't pray against it. Was it not God who initiated the problem for Job? The, the Bible said the people of God were going. The devil also went. And as soon as God saw the devil, hey, devil, welcome, what's up? 
Good man, how, how you be? Have, have, and they start having, hey, what's up, bro? And then God said, have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> Where from this? Yeah. You, God, you are the one who deals with the devil. Just deal with him. He introduced Job to the devil. He had confidence in Job. Yes, sir. Until he can recommend Job to the devil. Can God recommend you? Aye. Can God trust you enough? There is a necessary recommendation. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift through like wheat. I didn't rebuke him. Really? I am with you. And you are not talking about my mother, my uncle, my sister. Satan himself asked to sift me like wheat and you didn't rebuke me and I've been with you all this while. If your pastor tells you this, would you ever like him? Pastor Fritz tells you and says, hey, come bro. The devil came to me last night. He said he wants to destroy you. And I've given him permission. And I lay hands on you. May God be with you. What kind of a pastor are you? <laughs> but this is what Jesus did. He said, may God be with you. Satan has had to see too f- like with, but I have prayed. F- Do you know Satan? Satan. And then he said, I've, when you come, I'll strengthen your brethren. What you are going through, what you have, what you are about to acquire, it's not for you. It's for the brethren. It's for the kingdom. It's for the people. So don't be selfish and sit down there. God is entrusting you with the brethren. So step up your game. Your car is not for you. Your business is not for you. It's for the brethren. I'm not talking to somebody here. And so that's what they were dealing with. Their problem was not the lack of promise, but their inability to think. But let's consider this brother called Caleb. Caleb. This guy called Caleb, he was with them in Egypt. And he left with them. And do you know that all the people that left Egypt, those that were 20 years old and above, did not enter the promised land. Yeah. Because they carry some mindset that God did not want. Those who were 20 years and below were the people who, were, who made it to the promised land. And those who were born in the course of the journey. The only two people that entered the promised land that were above 20 was Joshua and Caleb. Because there was something about Caleb. These two guys, when Moses was taken away, Joshua was made the next leader. And then Caleb was another extraordinary guy. So what made Caleb and Joshua enter the promised land? From the scripture we read, in Numbers chapter 14, verse 20 to 24, Bible said number one, he had a different spirit. God himself said that Joshua, my servant, Caleb, my servant, has a different spirit. Meaning that he, is not, he doesn't allow his environment to detect to him. And so it is possible to live in a defeated place and still have the spirit of victory. It is possible to live in a place of failure and still have the victories, victor's mindset. He lived in Egypt, but he did not have Egypt mindset. He lived in Goshen, but he did not have small mentality. He lived in, in, in Egypt, but he did not have any self-centeredness. He took the risk. He lived in Egypt, but he did not have that scarcity mindset. Caleb was a different person, and God looked at him and said, this one has a different spirit. That was God's testimony. May you have a different spirit. And so what actually happened to Caleb was that he made a conscious effort. Number one, he followed that Lord wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. He followed the Lord totally. He made the decision that he would not allow everything he had been through to affect his ability to perceive the glory ahead of him. It was a conscious decision. He made the decision. Everything the others went through, Caleb also went through it. But hear me, he made the decision. There is a place for you to come 
in your life where you make major decisions. Where you sit and say, this is how I want my life to be. He made the decision not to follow the logical argument presented. He made the decision not to follow the intellectual argument presented. That seems so convincing. He made the decision to follow the Lord. Because sometimes the thing they present to you is enough to let you know that it's not your fault. Oh, it's not your fault. It's okay. It's not your fault. Where you come from, it's okay. You have done well. It's your fault. You have not done well. Oh, when I consider where you're coming from and how far you have come, the Lord has been good. And some Christian sisters and brothers, they say some of these things to us and they make us complacent and they make us feel like we have arrived. Joshua, Caleb said, no. I lived in Egypt, but I make a decision to fight. I was one of the slaves, but I refuse to allow my past to hold on to me. So when everybody says no, he says, I will say yes. I will find out what God is saying. When all the odds are against me, I will still go to God and find out the mind of God. I make that conscious decision. I don't live in the moment. There are Christians who live in the moment. Throw a party for them and they forget about everything. And they enjoy the party. Hey, uh, happy go, hey, party. Uh, uh, and they don't remember anything again. They did get sad and get disappointed. They don't remember the party you threw for them. Christians who live in the moment cannot accomplish anything. In the moment, connect your past and link it to your future. Because sometimes the moment can be deceptive. Can I give you one moment that's very deceptive? Your wedding day. So beautiful. Don't know. And you are looking nice in that white gown. You are not going to wear the white gown every day. By the time they share grace, everybody will be going home. And so, in that moment, think. Don't talk down upon people. Don't disregard people. Connect your past and link it to your future. Am I talking to somebody here? So, Caleb made that decision somewhere along the line in his life to follow God. And so, hear me, brother. You have to make a conscious decision at some point in your life to follow God and not to follow the people. You have to say that no matter what happens to me, I am the head, even though I am sleeping in somebody's couch. No matter what happened to me, I am victor, even though I see failure. It is a conscious decision. No matter what happens to me, I will make it, even though. It seems like I am behind bars. No matter what happens to me, you can put me behind bars, but you cannot imprison my mind because my mind is bigger than the law. My mind is wider than the prison gate. And so put a man of vision in prison. He will still come out of prison and become a prime minister and a president. I am talking about Nelson Mandela. Slavery could not stop him. Racism could not stop him. All the things he went through could not stop him. He still came out and became a president what are you thinking about ladies and gentlemen I want to appeal to your mind this morning so if God tells you I will just, just take it some of us do know why we cannot make decisions because we carry so many excess baggages with us we are too emotional. You can't follow the Lord wholeheartedly and be emotional. Some of us, we are always angry. We are always bitter. You must empty yourself from all distractions. Empty yourself, empty yourself from all distractions because they won't take you anywhere. Some of us, we are traveling and we have this bag on us. It's a bag of bitterness. Anybody who offends us, we take it and put it inside. Bitterness bag. The next one is anger bag. Anybody annoys us, we keep it there. So you read that some people who have been offended for 20 years, they still have it in the bag. People who have been betrayed for 15 years, they are still not forgiven. Unforgiveness bag, they hang it. And so one person is traveling, he has all these bags hanging on him. 
And so when you got to the airport, you have excess bag, baggage with you. And then they ask you to pay for the excess and you cannot pay, which means that you cannot travel. For many of us, the only reason why we have not hit our destination is because of the excesses we carry with us. We carry so much excess with us until we cannot hit, until we cannot hit our de destination. They weigh us back. Drop them. Drop them. I told you the other time. When, 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 when Esau met Jacob, Esau had no bitterness in him. The best form of revenge is what? Success. Succeed and you will not be bitter. Succeed and you will not think about your enemies. In fact, when you succeed, you would rather want to sit in your land cruiser and drive where they are. And drive where they are so that they will know that the Lord has what? Honored you. Look at you. You are not doing nothing. You are wallowing in pain and agony and bitterness. And when you see God blessing them, you are getting angry. Listen, they don't think about you. You don't think about them. So think about yourself. Shout yes. Am I talking to somebody here? Some of you have nice houses. Beautiful beds and comfortable, but you can't sleep in it because somebody offended you. So you go and lay on your bed and you can't sleep in the night. Because we are thinking about what somebody said to you the night before. And the person is sleeping and snoring. And you couldn't sleep. You wake up the next day, you go to work, you can't function proper. You get fired. Because you are carrying SS with you. You can't go to the next level with all of that. Caleb had to empty every one of them. I've been abused. I've been manhandled. I've been used. I've been ostracized. I've been through the valleys and the shadows. I've been enslaved. I helped them build their mansions and they built their city and they didn't give me anything. But I'm still not bitter. I am holding on to what God has said. They can use me all they want, but I still have a mind of my own. I have a sure word in my spirit. By my God, I will run through troops. By Him, I will leap over walls. I am pressing on to the higher calling. Nothing can stop me, nothing can limit me. You can talk about me all you want. I am pressing on. You can gossip about me. I won't pay you no mind. I am looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him and endure the cross somebody press on have you considered why in your car you have a big windshield and a small rear view mirror the manufacturers are saying that what is behind you is too small compared to what is ahead of you so look ahead look wider Look bigger. But some of us, we spend time looking. We, you know. May God give you grace to look ahead. I'm not talking to somebody here. And so some of these things can distract you. It can distract you. It can distract you. It can stop you. I told you last night. Elijah had done such amazing job. And one woman, one woman stood up against Elijah, and Elijah started running and running and running and came and laid down under some tree and said, God, kill me. And God said, nonsense. He said, God, kill me. I'm not the only prophet. I want to die now. Because of one, you just killed many people, boy. He said, I, want, I am done. I can't do this. And some of us have been there before. I am done with the harvest. When you talk, they don't listen. When you say this, they say that. There's no, they're always confused. I am done. I can't do this anymore. You better sit your down. Some of you, I can't take this humiliation. Until you learn to take a little humiliation, God will not elevate you because humiliation is part of the journey. Allow yourself to be humiliated a little, huh? It's part of the journey. You know they're abusing you. You know. It's not because you're ignorant. You know. But allow yourself. Because God is on the throne. He's still watching. At the fullness of time, he will honor you. Can I have a bigger amen? amen. So Elijah was like, kill me, kill me, kill me. I'm done, I'm done. And God comes and slapped him out of sleep and said, get up. There's food. Eat. Oh boy, eat. Eat food. Eat food. Get up and eat food. And God said, for the journey ahead of you is far. 
And what amazed me is that God never said anything about Jezebel. God never paid attention to Jezebel. So God is saying that your, your enemies are mine to take care of, but your mind is yours to take care of. And so when you spend time fighting enemies, God will say you are, you are using energy wrong. What you need to spend time on is where you are going. Some of you will fight. Once, once you hear fight, you fight. The Bible says fight the good fight. You are fighting ah, until you are going nowhere. Turn to the north. Look at someone and say, let's turn, let's turn, let's turn, let's turn. Slap someone and say, turn, turn, turn. So number one, he, 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 he followed the Lord wholeheartedly. And then number two, he followed the, number two, he followed his heart. He said, I brought back reports as it was in my heart. What do you have in your heart? Sometimes what you have in your heart is contrary to everything you're experiencing. Right? Sometimes you know you are a big person, but your environment says you are small. Sometimes you know you are bigger than what you are going through, but everywhere you are, you know you are bigger than that ministry. Sometimes you know you have a bigger heart. People don't see it. Sometimes you are living in, in somebody's one-room uh, apartment, and you know you, you are bigger than that. That is what is in your heart. Keep what is in your heart, not what is around you. Caleb didn't keep what was around him. He kept what God said in his heart. He nurtured it. If I have to look into your heart, if God have to look into your heart, what do you have in your heart? Somebody's offense. Somebody's something. But the real thing that will keep you focused is not in your heart. I am beginning to close. You cannot get there until you keep it in your heart. Some of us must go back to our youthful age. Some of the things we wrote down. When you were a youth. When you were 18, 20. I want to be like this. I want to become this. I want to become that. Now you are 40 years. None of them has been established. Why? Because you have allowed life to happen to you. Life happened. And life will always happen. Go back and make reference to some of the things you wrote and go back for them. You couldn't finish that degree, you can go back for it. Go back and finish that project. Go back and build that hospital. God told you. You wrote it down. Why are you allowing life and the giant to stop you? Caleb said, I kept it in my heart. What do you have in your heart? What is the force that drives you? We talk about, about grace. Grace does not operate in empty vacuum. Grace doesn't operate that. Every grace given has an assignment. There's no grace given without any assignment. And so when we sit here and we talk about um, abandoned life and we are talking about believing God for grace, there must be something that grace will add to where. And if you have it, God will give you grace. He's the God of all. All grace. All grace. We have lower levels of grace, higher levels of grace, grace for prison ministry, grace for marriage ministry, grace for um, school ministries, God for grace, grace, grace. All grace. And so you can't tell me you are struggling because there's no grace. No, you are struggling because you are not thinking it. Because if you think it, grace will be made available. said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I dare you in the name of Jesus. When you step out of these four walls, go and take that dream up. And let's have enough tangible testimonies in this house. Am I talking to somebody here? Kill him. And then, now Moses is dead. Joshua has become the leader. When Egypt, when Moses sent them to go and spy the land, Caleb was 40, 40 years old. 
Now the man is 85 years old, which means that 45 years has expired. Which means that for 45 years, these people were just wondering. Why? When the thing is just for, there for you to take, everything in the past has crippled our ability to rise. You major on trivial issues. My mother didn't do this. The choir master didn't do that. Pastor didn't greet me well. Sister didn't wish me birthday. So what? When it was my birthday, they didn't celebrate me. Sister, if nobody celebrates on your birthday, when your birthday comes, go and buy a card. Write your own name, your address on it, and mail it to yourself. And go and wait for it. When it comes, open it and say, Happy birthday to me. Buy yourself a birthday card. And sit down and eat it. Learn to celebrate yourself. Shout yes! Come on, give the Lord a shout! Man, 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 man. One of the things that place limit on us is our expectation from people. We expect so much from people that yeah, and when they don't do it, we get shattered. Man is man. Man na man. Don't expect anything from man. Be yourself. If they see you and they hug you, praise God. If they don't hug you, praise God. If they shake your hands, praise God. If they don't shake your hand, praise God. If they love you, praise God. If they don't love you, praise God. After all, you are not the reason of my existence. In him I live, I move, and I have my being. You cannot take away my joy. You cannot take away my peace. Don't give people the lenses to manipulate your life and to control your life. Take your destiny into your own hands. Give the Lord a shout. Somebody shout it, shout it, shout it. From today, you will become you. Nobody can control you again. Nobody can stop you again. Nobody can limit you. Whether with them or not, you will still be. By my God, you will be. Your destiny is in your own hands. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is written upon you. Give the Lord a shine. Somebody say, ay, 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 ay. Give somebody a high five. Tell the person, look at me. Give this person a high five. Look at the person eyeball to eyeball. And tell the person, look at me. Look at me for the last time. This is the last time you will see me like this. Do you know what it means? It means that after this conference, after this conference, after this morning, something will change, something will shift, something will happen. After today, you are going higher, you are going higher. Am I talking to you? Something is happening, something is happening, something is happening. You are going higher, you are climbing it, things are changing, things are moving. Somebody say... Refuse to be limited. Refuse to be intimidated. Refuse to be controlled. Who told you you can control me? Oh, but I look at the person and say, look at me for the last time. This is the last time you will see me like this. It means that tomorrow by this time, when they see you, they will take off their glasses, they will clean it, they will put it on, they will look at you, and they ask you what happened to you and you will tell them i am just coming from abundance conference something has shifted i have a mountain i have something if you believe i am talking to you lift up your two hands and give yahweh a soul now let me close after 45 years this is the part I like. Caleb, 
goes to Joshua. And he said, 40, 45 years ago, the people I was with, they didn't help. They were negative-minded people. If after 45 years, you still have the same friends with you. And they have not developed their mindset. They are in your life for doom. Caleb said, the people I have in my life now, 45 years ago, I have them 45 years ago, they are not here now. And he said, he went to Joshua and said, now, now I am 85. My strength is as strong as it was when I was 40 years old. Which means that age is just a number. The man is defying age. Don't tell me uh, I am 50 so I can't do it. Uh, 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 somebody receives strength to do it. Receive power to do it. Receive energy to do it. Are you ready to do it? Shut, I am doing it, I am doing it. I am doing it, I am doing it. I am doing it, I am doing it. And then he goes to Joshua and he said, after 45 years, now I'm 85. He lifted up his eyes and looked at the mountain and said, Josh, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. The level must change. Something must shift. I am taking this mountain by force, by fire. Nothing will stop me. After 45 years, Joshua, Caleb is claiming his mountain. And when you read Bible, it's like, out to today, the mountain was claimed and left for the descendant of Caleb. He took it and gave it to his descendant. What mountain are you looking at? Give me this mountain. What is your mountain? Name your mountain. What do you classify as your mountain? I don't care the enemies on the land. Give me this mountain. I don't care my background. Give me this mountain. Jesus. I have no education, but that is not my problem. Give me this somebody get a mountain somebody get some mountain somebody get a mountain somebody get a mountain it will set you apart it will make you unique give me this mountain and then when they went to take it Rahab said something to them he said 40 years ago 45 years ago when we heard that you guys were coming he said the whole city our heart melted because we have heard about how God had dealt with you. He opened the Red Sea. He led you in the day as a pillar of cloud. In the night as a pillar of fire. We heard all the things God did. So 45 years ago, when you guys were coming and we heard it, the whole city, including the king and everybody, our hearts melted. Yet they were giants. So what they were afraid of was actually afraid of them. So they actually delayed their own success and progress. And so God got angry and came and slapped them and said, Turn to the north. Because what you think you cannot do, you have everything to do it. It's just your mindset. 45 years ago, they were afraid of the giant. Actually, the giants were afraid of them. So all they needed was to step into it. Some of us are daring some businesses. We are afraid. In fact, the business is afraid of you. You are daring some grounds. What if I fail? What if I don't succeed? And so we sit down every day and we talk about it. Brother, build that hospital. Build that school. Build that university. Build that church. Build that house. Build that institution. Go for it. Give me this mountain. As I close, give me this mountain. I'm leaving you with this. Everybody get a mountain. Your mountain is your divine assignment. It's your establishment. Caleb took the mountain at the age of 85. When he turned to the north and violated all the odds and destroyed everything they knew 
and did not allow the systems and the structures and his background to dictate to him. He did not allow what Pastor Yima said about Pastor Diskin to stop him. He did not allow that gossip to get into him. He did not allow the system, the economy. He did not allow the factors of life to get to him. Caleb said, I have been it all, but I'm still ready for my mountain. Yeah. My God. Hey, when you in part two, about it? Mr. Day. Uh huh. Mr. When you in part two? Mr. Day. Should be in the kitchen, sir. When you in part two? We are not passing it. On your mid to move, on your mid to move, on your mid case to move, on your mid to me to move. You carry the power of God. We are not passing it. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. If you believe you are going to take the mountain, clap your hands. If you believe you are going to take the mountain, stop your feet. If you believe you are going to take the mountain, start jumping, start jumping, start jumping, start jumping, start jumping, start jumping, jump, jump, jump. I said jump. for your mountain Harvest Chapel are you ready for your mountain come on run around yes give me this mountain let the redeem of the Lord say so let the redeem of the Lord say so let the redeem of the Lord say so I redeem I redeem praise the Lord What are you standing there for? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Let the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Let the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let go, 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 let go,
Somebody lift him up. 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 Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.